Can't tell which one, which can't tell which eye is. I don't like using mirrors because mirrors are like portals. So, I don't, so I'm just using my camera as a way to. It's just to stop me using because I believe mirrors have our doppelgangers inside. I think they're like mirrors are like portals to another world. Uh, Parallel world, so to speak. Journey to the far side of the sun actually made me think of that being um, a possibility because I never liked mirrors when I was little. Cameras I can cope with because you can sleep what you don't want, but you're, you can't, you're not looking at your doppelganger as such. You're looking at, at a duplicate of yourself, but not a doppelganger, not a portal. So that's what I, that's why I prefer using a video camera when I, see I don't wear makeup, oh my god, oh, oh I see what's, oh my god, oh, this light, the gunk is, the white stuff is stayed on instead of blended in. That's what's making it gloppy and gloppy and instead of like the other eye. It's gone gloppy on this side. Uh, there we go. There we go. Now it feels the same. And then it gives the glop. It's, I think that's the glop. There's uh, just the corner of my eye. That's the corner of my eye. I don't like wearing makeup as such, but I do believe eyelashes are essential. And I believe having long eyelashes on, on it, a woman having long, ash, long eyelashes is even more essential because um, the longer they are, the better because of the fact that it gives us more protection against dust and dirt and stuff and kids. They're, they're protecting from things get into the eyes and the longer the eyelashes are the better they are at catching whatever might be um at the at the um eyelashes are good at catching whatever might be um, at risk of going into the eyes All right um this is just a I've got my headset on. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Oh uh, yeah, you can see it. <laughs> I was hoping to disguise it a bit, but I'm not going to. Um, now I'm doing this with a headset on because I have pulmonary sarcoidosis and it's hard for me to do a narrative because I'm worried that somebody might think that I'm a bloke. Or somebody might make fun of my accent because it's I'm British I was born here in Norfolk excuse me I was Brit I'm British I was born here in Norfolk in 1963 I was born on the coast um, 
was born a royal because my dad, his bloodline is mixed with the queens. Um, my dad had confirmation. We're from the House of Hanover, which means I'm a... So it doesn't matter what Charles does or says, I'm still going to be a royal regardless. He can't cut me off because I'm a Jewish princess as well. I'm of the House of David. And, and of the House of Hanover, and the Queen wants to reestablish the House of Hanover. Um, I don't know where that fits me in because um, but I'm also, um, I know how to behave and act as a royal because I was brought up in a certain, to behave a certain way. Although I schooled in America, I had a British, a strong Norfolk accent up to the age of, well, no, I was seven, but it was just after seven when I started really trying to learn to speak like they do in Arkansas, but I just couldn't do it. I could only go so far. My accent just could not... I, Everyone thought I spoke like I had a silver spoon in my mouth or like I was better than them. And I was kept having to tell them, no, I'm no better than any of you. I just speak the Queen's English. And they kept saying the Queen's English. And they said, you're American. I said, no, I'm British. And um, a lot of people at school, at the start, a lot of children used to take the Michael out of me and saying that um, I spoke funny and that I didn't know how to speak properly and this is in Arkansas and these people have a really deep, it's take a Norfolk broad speech, I mean the broad Norfolk speech, the broad Norfolk accent and you had a bit of Louisiana to it then you've got the accent of somebody from Arkansas who is like broad Arkansan. And their their tongue is really, really, um, <laughs> uh, basically it's a broad, it's a Norfolk broad accent, broad Norfolk accent with a Louisiana accent. And it's, I can't. I have never been able to speak with a broad um, Arkansan accent. I could never. Um, my dad is a Texan, and I picked up some of his accent. I learned a lot of how I spoke from him, but he was not like his accent was not really a proper Texan accent. If you um, his accent, um, he had a, he didn't come off sounding like a cowboy, let's just put it that way, he didn't come across, because his grand, his great grandparents were Germans, they were, uh, they had, he was, his dad and him were the, and his brother were the, first, second, and third generation Americans because his great granddad, his dad's dad and mom, they were German and um, his, his, which was my dad's granddad, his great granddad's name was Joseph because we are descended from the house of David and we are of one of the four sons of, we are descended from one of the four sons of Mary and Joseph, and they had two daughters, so there's families out there that have got their daughters in their bloodline. Um, but I remember my granddad telling me, he said, um, no matter how our name is spelt, we are all related, so if you come across somebody else 
if the spelling looks and sounds like the way we spell our name, they're relations. So, um, there's like 2,222 at the lost count of them spelling it the way we spell it, but he, he knew he must have been told by his parents about the, um, fact that, um, there are other relations that are spelled the same and also spelled different, but also the same name, but also the same relations because they're descended from the other three brothers. And so, um, but I'm, I've been homeless four times. Um, I've got pulmonary sarcoidosis in my right lung. I was um, born with cerebral palsy. I suffer with trigeminal neuralgia sometimes. And I've learned a trick how to deal with that. Um, I've learned how to try to uh, visualize that the nerves are being cut or that the, now I know where the, the trigeminal head is on the nerve. I now can visualize that being torn, uh, uh, cut off. But um, it's just basically I, I learned how to do a little bit of, because I have to have medication for a lot of the pain, but I've learned to use a type of... Um, I guess you can call it self-hypnotism, but not exactly self-hypnotism. What I do is, it's a relax, and because I, because I have, um, I was diagnosed with being highly empathetic in London, at the London um, National, the Queen's Square, the National um, for neurosurgery and neurology, and they diagnosed me with being highly empathetic, and, um, well, the psychologist said it was almost weird on the, he said it was virtually on the realm of telepathic, telepathy, because there was this girl there, and she, no one could talk to her, no one could get, no one could, um, open her up, she just would not, she just would not have it, she would not speak to anybody on, she just wouldn't speak to anybody, none of the staff, none of the other um, patients there on the, we, we were on the ward where um, Princess Diana's dad passed away on, and strange enough, I was in the same, I think I was in the same room, but he had the whole room to himself, I think, is the one room, the world's bay that we were in, and I had, I can't remember if it was four beds or six beds, but we had to make our own beds, and um, I had a wheelchair at the time because um, I was in a lot of pain, getting around, I still do, but when I grew up with the, because I got what's called combined um, scoliosis, and I also got a tumor on my spine where they did a lumbar puncture on me, well, anyway, um, this, this, um, the floor, to give you an idea of the floor we were on, there's a little old park just outside of, um, the hospital, and you can see, because uh, Ormond Street is right next door, and then you got the Tate Gallery, which is wonderful, beautiful view, I wish I had had, if I had had the cameras that we have today, I would have taken some photos, I did manage to take some photos, and I had to go back to, I managed to get some photos on my mobile phone, but, uh, um, at the time, I didn't have, um, I didn't have any, um, 
Yeah, I think it was a mobile phone, or was it a cam? Anyway, I managed to get some photos when we went back there. And I had to see the doctor again. She wanted me to go back for another three weeks stay so they could do some more studying on me. And I didn't really want to go back. But um, anyway, the psychologist, he was observing me, and I wasn't aware of this. And anyway, this girl, no one could get through to her. No one, she was like, you know, no one could speak to her. She didn't, it was like she was in a world all on her own. And I don't know what it was, but every time she came past me, I kept seeing these pictures in my head, and I was trying to work out. You know, because she, the strange thing was, like me, she liked wearing velvet, and she had all these same dress, but all in different colors. And I really thought that was quite interesting, and I thought her dresses were quite beautiful in that. But anyway, I was, I was, I was watching her. I was 30, I think I was 36 at the time. And, um... I think it was before, just before my husband and I got married, I think. Yeah, it must have been. Yeah, it was. It must have been 90, 97. So, did I can't remember what kind of camera I had to get the pictures. But anyway, um, at that time, I didn't have a camera. The first visit, I didn't have a camera to get pictures. But on the second run, I did. But I can't remember what kind of camera. It must have been a mobile. Anyway, this she kept coming past me. And every time she came past me, I kept seeing these pictures flash in my head. And I was like, what is going on? And I thought I was, and I was like, okay. So I just quieted my mind. And all the other residents, like, well, patients, we used to all, have like a chin wag because there's one particular doctor he made us really uncomfortable but anyway um we were having a chin wag but all of a sudden i had to just shut everybody out in my head i had to just kind of like a just be quiet in my head and i kind of sat there and i was just watching her and then I just saw this vision come into my mind, and it was a hard vision. It was like, basically, I was seeing my daughter, and and it was like, um, it was just a very, I don't know, it was, because my daughter was molested. Of my first husband, I hate to say it, but it's the only way I can explain how this vision came to me. Well, anyway, I she came past, and every time she came past, I was seeing her instead of my daughter, and I was like, "What is going on? Why? Why do I keep seeing this?" And I didn't, I didn't say anything to the other patients there because there was nothing to do with them so anyway um she used to draw in color so i i'm i'm somebody that likes art i'm not i don't consider myself a brilliant artist but i like i do like to draw and i like to do other kinds of other forms of artwork i like painting i like clay i like anything um, especially because I've got mild autism, I like anything soft, anything that shiny, sparkly. I just like making things, and I like making, using all different kinds of textures and that. And at the minute I'm doing a lot of dolls dresses and making a lot of different outfits for dolls. Um... So, this, on this occasion, this, um, she was sitting down, she was coloring, and then I asked her, without trying to impose on her, I said, it's okay if I 
color with you or draw with you. I said, because I, I like to draw. I said, I'm not a good artist. I said, but you, I looked at her over at her picture. I said, my goodness, you're a brilliant artist, you are. And then I just sat there quietly with her. Decided just not to say anything, just to... Because I, I didn't know why there was a nurse that was overlooking her. Like she had to be, like she was being protected for something. or I don't know. It was really bizarre. Anyway, um, I just started drawing. And then I said to her, I said, you know, because it was weird. It was like I heard her say something. I thought she actually did say something to me. Because I actually heard her. But I thought she was using her mouth. I didn't realize she used her mind. And she and I and I said out to her. I said, "Yes, my daughter was molested by her dad." And then I said, "But I said she's safe now. I said she's with um, she's with some people that I trust. They'll protect them." And then I got this. Um, where she said something and I said about being afraid of the men in the on the ward and I said oh you don't have to worry about them they're okay I know no one here is gonna hurt you and um, then I said um, I can't remember where if it came to me as a vision or if it came to me as a feeling but then I said to her, I said, well, your stepdad, he's okay with you, isn't he? And then she said she wasn't sure about him because she, but she, I said to her, I said, well, he's protecting you, isn't he? And then she said, yes. And then I said, um, he hasn't done to you what you, your other dad did. And she said, no. I said, well, then you're safe. I said, none of the men here will hurt you either. I said, obviously, this man that married your mom, he's a good man. He's taking good care of you. I said, I've got a, um, a fiancé. I'm going to be getting married soon. And her then... I don't know what happened. It was really weird. It was like one minute she's like she's talking to me, but I'm hearing it in my head. But I'm thinking I'm hearing it with my ears. And then all of a sudden, boom, you know, she's actually talking, talking, physically talking. So I'm, my brain is trying to work out, like, is she using her lips or is she using her head, you know? And then she said, she said, I like you. And I said, well, I like you too. I said, I enjoy drawing and coloring with you and speaking with you. And she whispered in my ear. She she got close to me, rather. She said, how did you know what I was thinking? How did you know what to, to say? And I said to her, I said, well, I thought you were talking to me. She said, well, I was. I said, but she said, I didn't use my mouth. I said, no, I said, I thought you were using your mouth. You were using your head. And I said, I heard you. And she said, you've got it too, haven't you? And I said, I've got what too? And she says, you know how to do it. You know how to hear people. And I said, well, yes, but I'm very careful who's who I hear. And she said, well, can I, do you think I can use it to protect myself? I said, look, I said, just remember, just be careful, because if you do it to somebody and they're not aware you're doing it, that's an invasion of their privacy. And she said, I know, she said, I, but she said, I, I just do get scared and I don't know. I said, look, I said, just... What I do is, if I sense that somebody is not saying, if they, I feel that they're not saying, like basically if they're making out there's somebody they're not, and my senses and my 
empathy tells me that there's somebody different. I said, I know to keep away from them. I said, because some people, like, I said, when I lived with the Native Americans, they said that people speak with forked tongues, and so a lot of them do. Uh, we'll say the sky is blue and with wonderful sunshine and clear as day, but then they're lying to you, and it's full of yellow spots, and, and the sky isn't blue, it's pink or purple, and that. And then you know that you got to keep away from that person because you can't trust them. I said, but what I do, I said, I don't go into their heads so much. I said, that, that only happens very rarely. I said, that's when they start imposing on me and getting into my space. And then I start having to... I said, but I don't do it all the time. I said, I've learned I can only do it, or I should only do it. I've taught myself that it should only be done if there is, like, um, a threat, a threat um, from somebody who, well, to give you an example, um, I hate giving this example, but... My husband and I got raped by the security guards in 2011. I don't want to go into too much detail about it because I want to get upset. While the bloke was raping me, I was able to see his family, his wife, his boys, and I was able to see he was having affairs with other women, and he was like going to these um, places where he was picking up women and, you know, having sex with them, like, um, prostitutes, and, um, and I also ended up seeing how he wanted to, what he wanted to do with me, um, which I didn't like, I was just grateful I had my clothes on, but the pain he causes me was, oh, I don't even want to talk about it, but, um, the problem is, I was able to feel all his nastiness, his oh, the nasty thoughts that he had, and I was able to see how he was with his wife, and how, and I was able to see his home, and I just wanted to cry. I didn't know what pain was the worst, the pain of him abusing me and raping me or the pain of how he treated, seeing how he treated his wife and, and his boys, you know, and um, I just wanted to just scream out to him what I saw, but I just was just caught in the, you know, I was just felt like I was trapped. I mean, uh, he had my hands behind my back, but anyway, I don't want to get into too much of that because uh, the other security guard was right with my husband and that, that, when I think of that, that gets me even more upset. No, I don't want to, just wanted to let you know that that's how it hits me the hardest when I'm, when I'm close to somebody and they're giving off like really strong visualizations and my mind's picking them up. Because it's called um, empathetic telepathy. And what starts off is you feel the emotions and then you see the pictures that go with it. And you and it's hard sometimes because you're sometimes mixing your, you know, you got to learn where your, where your thoughts and feelings are and separate them from theirs. But I think we all can have it. Because animals have it, it's, it's instilled in us. And the Lord Elohim, He told us we have it. That's so what He had when He, He could, He could feel and see what people were saying and thinking, and that when they touched Him, even if they didn't touch Him, He could hear their thoughts. He could see what their, He could see what was in their minds, and He told us that we could do it as well. And I know that's true.
like I said, I've been able to do it for a very long time. And, um, but it's not something that is limited to just a few people. But there's only one trouble. You should be a kind of person who is righteous, not self-righteous, but righteous and clean and kind-hearted and willing to sacrifice yourself for somebody else because if um if you're negative in that then you get the you get these nasty demons creeping in and they start giving you visions and that you don't want and they latch on to you but if you're if you're somebody who's spiritual in the sense of worshiping, um, well, I, I'm Jewish, so he's Yahusha HaMashiach, which is what his proper name is anyway, because that's what he, that's his, the name he was given, and, um, but his, his, um, the Greeks, the Greeks named him, Jesus, or Yeshua, uh, what they call him, Yeshua, or, yeah, Yeshua, I think it was, Yahushua, Yahusha is his name in Hebrew, Yeshua, or Jesus is his name in Greek, but because Yahusha is a derivation of the word Yahuwah, which is the father, the son is Yahusha, or Yahushua, and that is his proper name, because it's a name above any other, every other name, there's no other name like it, but unfortunately, the Greeks changed his name to, because he, his name to them sounded like Joshua, and well, he couldn't be Joshua, and because he, he's a god, and a son of a god, he needed to have a name, and they went and used the god Zeus and used him to form the name Jesus, or Yeshua. And that's how it's been, and a lot of Christians don't, and the thing is, I've noticed when I've been watching some videos on, on, um, when people call out Yeshua's name in the Greek, when they say Christ Jesus and that, and they're trying to get the, and they're, and they're trying to get the demon or whatever it is that they're afraid of, trying to, what they're doing is because they've made that his name so common and it's used inappropriately, it's not a, it's not, a divine, it's not respectful, it's been kind of, um, the way it's been used, it's, um, to me it's been used and abused the Greek way, it's been taken out of, it's, I have, when I, when I watch these people, when they're confronted with, a demon or something like that, they, um, they, a lot of times they use his name just like common speech, they use his name as if it's not something to be revered, and that's why when they use his name, nothing happens, because they're not revering him, they're not giving him reverence, and the only way and I don't want anyone to, um, due to his Hebrew name, what they've done to his Greek name, because his Hebrew name is very, very, it's reverent, it's, it's revered, and I find when I say it, I find it means, it, I, when I say his name in Hebrew, I find that I'm, saying his name in the way that I am giving him reference, 
right, I'm giving him praise in that, and I just think that people need to know he came as a Jew for a reason, so people could know what his Jewish name is and how to use it and how to not abuse it. It's something to be revered and something to praise, pray for and praise the and praise Yahweh for, because um, he also Yahushua Hamashiach was Melchizedek, and that is why he needs to be revered because he came and sacrificed his life for us. He came and lived amongst us, and he, he, well, he went through everything that he knew we would go through. Like when, about wanting the cup to pass over him, that he was reluctant to do what he was, what was expected of him, but he, he did it anyway. He did do what was required, but at the end of the day, um, the reason he done that was because there are people who will go through where they lo love the Lord and worship Him, and then for some reason um, they he, they feel that He wants them to do something. Not I'm not talking about like with these criminals. I'm not talking about that kind of thing. How these criminals use His name and saying. That he made them do it. He would never do that kind of thing. I'm talking about, like, when it comes to, like, say, going to a place that's very dangerous and giving the Lord's message to some people who are in desperate need of help and that, and in a place where um, Judaism and Christianity is um, treated as... We're, we're being a Christian or a Jew is treated as um and uh, not um where being a Christian or a Jew is um you're you're tortured and abused basically or being loving the Lord well anyway if he asks you to go to one of these countries. And there's a risk of you ministering the word, and there's a risk of you being um, caught and killed, and that you're going to be. So you know, those he calls to do that might be reluctant to say, "No, I can't do this. I can't risk it. You know, I can't risk my, you know, my family and that." But at the end of the day. That is his will, and you've got to follow it. And if he says, do this, you have to. And that's not because he's forcing you to, because you've got free will. But he's, it's, he's saying, this is what I need you to do. And, you know, it's, and if he says, I require you to do this, you're not going to say, well, no, I'm not going to do it. But there is going to be a moment of hesitation where you're going to be reluctant in doing it because you're going to be worried about when you're caught, how you're going to be killed and all this and the repercussions on your family and what, you know, but he, that's why he says we got to love him over our families and our loved ones, and the thing is, he's, um, I'm sorry about making this a sermon, but I'm just trying to explain that everything he did, he did for a reason, and that was to help us when we have those kind of challenges, and, you know, and he was very, he was, had very, well, he's God. He's the son of God. He, you know, his, so he was very strongly empath had empathetic telepathy. But with him, it wasn't empathetic telepathy. It was because we're his creations, and he he knew us by name. He knew he knows us, you know, before we were born. 
But um, the thing is, he did say that we were given a gift, and you know, and it takes some. Some of us find it. Some of us never do find it. Um, sorry that this is a long video, and I want to thank all my hundred and uh, sorry, my one thousand forty six or forty eight subscribers. I'm sorry that I don't post as often as I should do. It's just as you know, I've been I'm very ill and I don't mean to play on that. It's not my intention, but it's just very hard for me to put videos together. And because of the hoarseness in my voice I get concerned that if I do any narration it's going to come out wrong. And I sometimes like the videos to speak for themselves um but i do like to vlog a bit i do like to just vlog and talk and share and just to let you all of you know that you're not alone and i know sometimes loneliness makes you feel like you, there's no one else there for you but i know that i understand the loneliness because you know, I'm not with my husband at the minute. He's in a different place at the minute. We're waiting to be rehoused together. I wasn't allowed to raise my daughter over here because even though I'm on her birth certificate because her biological grandmother demanded that she stayed in America when, but thankfully, even though I didn't give birth to her, because I'm on her birth certificate, she can become a British subject, a British citizen, no problem, without having to take a test, because of me being her mother. Same goes for our grandchildren and her husband, so if they want to come over and start a new life to send, you know, they can, because of, now her husband will probably have to take a test, but... It, but the thing is, I think through her, he will, there wouldn't be a problem because he's, um, but he would have to sign a visa thing like my parent, mother has to in America. So, um, but anyway, um, I will try to, excuse me, I keep getting dried lips. But I just wanted to thank all of you who have, have subscribed and I will have to try to do better about posting videos um I just wish that I was um a better vlogger I'm not I can't do like some of these other people but I can I've got my own um I've got my own way of doing things and I've got a lot of things I'd like to show you and I'm gonna put out I've got some interesting um, paranormal photos and videos and stuff I want to share, and I've got some craft stuff that I've been doing that I want to share, and, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff I want to, because at the minute I haven't developed another channel yet, but I was thinking about doing, um, and I do have a little squeeze. Yeah, my mom said I don't, but I do. I've got a little bit of wrinkles up on my forehead, but everybody has those. Um, but, I, but the thing is, you know, sorry about that. It's just my mom said something the other day, and I just kind of sorry. I had to check, and because I was, my mom, bless her heart, she thinks that I don't have any any wrinkles, which I think I do, she says that I don't, but anyway, at 56, I expect to have some wrinkles, but, um, I'm not bothered about getting old, I'm almost 60, so it doesn't really matter, <laughs> growing old gracefully is all that matters, and growing old is a good thing because if the Lord allows you to grow old, that means that you know you've served Him well. Um, and I, I have, considering the, the conditions that I have and the level of my health needs and the level of my um, pain that I get and everything, I have. I, 
I still am standing where others would be struggling, but that's through faith and faith in the Lord is what is essential. And I know that I couldn't survive another day without it. But I, you know, hopefully soon my husband and I'll be rehoused together at both Orp and we can set up our home there and I can do proper, proper videos together. Um, cause I got a laptop I need to update and I could use that to make my videos on. Plus I also study, um, tardigrades and I like to look at organisms and stuff under the microscope. <coughs> I want to do something. Um, for Open University, I want to go back and do a, like an open course where I can do my own research. And even if it's for a year or something, I just try to do, I'm not looking to, like, because I'm, I'm born a royal princess, so, it, you know, whatever that means. Um, what I mean is, you know, what, in relation to my life, I know what it means in one respect, but I don't know what it means and how do I utilize my title to help others is what I mean. That's what I mean by whatever that means is how, as I am, do I utilize my title to help others, serve others, and that being what a princess should do when that's um, being there for the people and listening to the people and trying to um, do what is asked of me by the queen or what well the queen I don't think it would really expect anything much of me because of my, my health but you know if she did ask me to do something I would say yes, but Charles, I, I don't, I don't think an adulterer should be sitting on the throne of England, and I know William has never, ever been unfaithful to Catherine, and I really don't think an adulterer and his adulterous wife, because they're still adulterers in the eyes of God, and they should not be on the throne of England, and that's the way I see it, or the throne of the UK, because I'm only stating it because I feel strongly that Charles is unfit to be king, and because he has committed adultery, and his, and his wife is and was an adulteress, um really should not be sitting on the throne of the of the UK and when he says he's going to be up for all the faiths no there's only one because there's only one god and the C of E okay it's the queen's church it's protestant church and that's what he should be standing for not all faiths yes um Judaism, he, he can't represent Judaism because he doesn't know anything about it. He doesn't know what it is to be a Jew. He knows nothing about Judaism. Come to that, he knows nothing about the other religions, but as a, I'm a Messianic Jewess, and as far as I'm concerned, you know, there's only Yahweh, Yahusha HaMashiach and Rak HaKadosh. But the thing is, I'm not going to force my faith on anybody else because I only go by the scriptures and I live by the scriptures as much as I can. But, you know, if, if somebody's going to partake of it, that's up to you. But I can only share what my experiences are with it and how I've benefited from it. And how the Lord has helped me when I've been down and that. Come to that, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be born if it hadn't been for him. 
because I was 24 hours in my mother's womb before I came out. And when I came out, my spine was all twisted. Uh, my hip is just, I had, was born with hip dysplasia. Um, my right shoulder is stuck up. My left hip is right up. I mean, right hip and my right shoulder are up. I get a lot of pain there, but, you know, 56 years I'm here. And by all accounts, been out through the way my health has been. I should have been dead. In fact, I surprised I, I was. Um, I'm surprised I wasn't born um, more brain damaged than that. I'm, I'm really surprised, but that means that the Lord, He knew me, and He knew what He He what He He knows like the others here as well, and they're all going to heaven. Especially Stephen and I, and you know, all of us here are going to heaven. From what I, from what someone said to me, and I said that because we're disabled and we're his children, and we're the, we're like teachers, and all and the, his prophets were disabled, and he had them; they were disabled, and yet. He used, they used their disability to serve him, and um, I know I keep rambling, but I just think I just want to thank all of you and to know that um, I believe in the two things the Lord left us with, and He said that are in lights everything all the all the prophets said, and it covers all the, you know all the books, the Gospels, he said, two things I leave you with, love, love the Father, love him, love Yeshua, Yahushua, with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, and love thy neighbor as thyself, and that means loving one another, forgiving one another, and even if your neighbor is dreadful to you, uh, mine has been, I just forgive them, what they do with my, that forgiveness is up to them, they can take it, or they can, can just throw it away, but at least it was offered, and, you know, I can't force people, and I, but, um, if my enemy is going to hate me without a cause, I'm going to forgive them. Because, like the Lord said, forgive them for they do not know what they do. And I think in the same frame that, yes, they, I should forgive them because they don't know that I was born a royal princess, a, a member of the royal family, a Davidic princess. I was born a Jewish princess. They didn't know that. Um, they didn't know I was born in the house of David. They didn't know I was born in the house of Hanover and the house of Wetton and the house of Wales. So, you know, I forgive them because, you know, in their ignorance, they done me a favor and my husband a favor because things work out in the new year. We're going to have a lot bigger place to spend and have our time and have some quality time together um for whatever time that we're that he's going to give us and um you know and just praise him and that's what we're but we want to, i'm going to try to share um whatever i can to help hopefully what i share can help some of you if you're going through it yourself because i I know that we all share, we all go through similar experiences and that, and we all have similar things. So if I share what, how, parts of my, aspects of my life that maybe some of you are going through, and you see how I've dealt with it, maybe it might help you, and maybe some of you won't, but I mean, if 
one of you benefits in that, and you can share it with somebody else, and then they'll benefit. So you just pass it on, and that's how, how it works. You just pass it on, and loving thy neighbor as thyself means loving people regardless of what they look like, who they are, and where they come from. Because I think love is blind, which means love turns a blind eye. You don't, it doesn't mean you don't acknowledge, you have to acknowledge the, you got to obviously, um, you got to step away from someone who is, you know, doing something that is wrong, but you got to let them know you're still there if they need you. So that they can come to you when they are, they're ready. But if they're still like um, on the dark side, so to speak, you don't want them in your. To, you'd want the darkness coming into your light, but you want your light to shine out, shine, take away their darkness. Uh, well, that rest is for later. Um, but God bless to all of you, and I hope that um, I don't bore you, and um, I hope to share some more things with you uh, in the care home, so, and I'm, <laughs> I'm getting in pain, so you have to ex kind of excuse me how I go along with things, but I'll do my best to produce proper videos, and I'll go over some of the videos that I have put up there, especially the lost ones relating to Tivu. I'll explain that one in the next video. I'll explain how that came about and then you'll understand um, how I've um, developed um, a connection with them, the Edomites, and I'll explain more as we go along. But I'll leave you this with you for now and um, you know, if you want to subscribe, if you're someone that's never been on, you know, you're more than welcome to subscribe. Um, you know, just, um, just know that I'm just, uh, somebody that understands what it means to go through pain, be homeless, be disabled, and to be separated from those that you love. I know all and understand all that and amongst other things, you know, so I I can I wish I could lend an ear to all of you, but if I can just share how things have been and what I've experienced, maybe some of it will help you and like I said and just but I will try to make this I'll try to make my channel much more interesting. I got loads of other stuff to share, and that I've got loads of things to put together, but it's just getting there, and I think I'm gonna need a little bit of help. I don't know, but um, God bless to all of you, and love you, and shalom, and um, take take good care, and know that He is with you. Yahusha Hamashiach is with you. And that he loves you, and I love you, and God bless.